Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Aaron Gurley. I'm Mike Dobbinspeck, and tonight we have Mr. Todd Click. He's uh, running for Republican Sheriff candidate for Rush County. And uh, Todd, we welcome you. Thanks for having me. Now, what's your current title with the police department? I am uh, the assistant chief of police right now. Okay. And how long have you been here? I've been with Rushville PD for 17 years. 17. Were you anywhere before RPD? Yes. yes. I, uh, back in 1998, I um, joined the Marion County Sheriff's Department as a uh, jail officer. I worked up there for about two years, two and a half years. Um, then we became a jail officer with the Fayette County Sheriff's Department for about six months before I got hired here. Excuse me, hired here at Rushville PD. And Todd, during your time here at the PD, you know, you and I have have, have worked together in the mm -hmm. past. Um, but did you start here as a patrolman, or was it reserve? You know, kind of kind of take us through your rank process here of, of going through the PD. Okay. Um, in February of 2001, um, I was brought on the department as a reserve officer. Um, in May of that year, I was hired as a full-time officer and uh, began my patrol duties. Um, in January of 2007, I was uh, promoted to the rank of sergeant and became a uh, patrol supervisor. Uh, I was a patrol supervisor for about a year and a half. Um, then in August of 2008, I was uh, promoted to detective, um, served as detective for almost four years. Um, and then in January of 2012, I was appointed assistant chief of police. And it, with your time within the department, Todd, um, if you could uh, maybe highlight to us some of the things, uh, some of your training experiences, some of the things that uh, you, know, you have that the people may not know about that, you know, play a big role in your everyday job as a police officer, uh, law enforcement officer, period. Okay. Um, when I was on patrol, uh, most of my training was mostly geared towards uh, the patrol aspect of um, law enforcement. Um, I was a certified chemical breath test operator um, and um, was certified in um, SFSTs, which is a standardized field sobriety testing uh, for DUI detection. Um, did a lot of uh, narcotics training, um, mainly in the area of methamphetamines. Um, then when I became a patrol sergeant, um, one of the requirements was to go through a um, first line supervisor uh, training. Um, so then when I was detective, I received an extensive amount of training, um, uh, mainly focusing in on um, forensic computer investigations, um, death investigations, homicide investigations, robbery investigations. Um, I, was a, I was an investigator for the Indiana Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Um, a lot of those investigations um, were not only done here in Rushville, but the southeastern part of Indiana. Um, a lot of child molest, uh, child exploitation cases. Um, I went through a, a week-long training um, in St. Louis, Missouri on um, suspicious death and homicide investigations. Received some, uh, some training from some of the uh, top homicide investigators in the United States. Um, and then when I became assistant chief, uh, gears kind of switched a little bit and I, uh, a lot more human resource um, training, um, internal affairs investigations training, um, things of that nature. And during your time as assistant chief of police, and this is just because I know you personally, mm -hmm. um, you also acquired a college degree, right? Yes, yes I did. Um, that was when I graduated high school from Rushville in 1991 I went to uh, Vincennes University for law enforcement. Um, I left Vincennes and did not um, graduate with a degree. That was something that kind of stuck in my crawl um, for most of my life just because it was something that I had tried to obtain and didn't finish. I understand that. Um, so then 
I was always one that um, I've always kind of strived to always improve myself. So when I became assistant chief, um, I decided that it was that time for me to go back and finish out my degree. So along with a full-time job and full-time family duties, I was uh, enrolled as a full-time student with uh, Liberty University and um, I graduated with uh, honors um, and obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal psychology. Good for you. Congratulations. Yes, that's Thank absolutely you. absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Um, Dob, before we dive too much more into this, I feel like we need to take an opportunity to uh, introduce a side of Todd that we kind of skipped over there, uh, and that would be the the personal side a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, you are married. Yes. Um, Not only is he married, he's happily married. Yeah, happily, true. <laughs> extremely. Extremely yes. happily married. That's right. Love you, honey. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but uh, your father? Yes. Uh, right. Also a, a longtime law enforcement officer mm -hmm. for Rush County? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, outstanding man that I've known most of my life, uh, not only as a person that I worked with, but as a coach as well mm -hmm. uh, when in, my, in my younger days. Um, but you, you come from a family of law enforcement. Yes, uh, uh, very steeped in law enforcement. My, um, my great-grandfather was a chief of police in Lebanon, Indiana. Uh, my grandfather um, was a, a volunteer fire chief in Speedway. Um, he was also a World War II and Korea War veteran. And then my father, Mark, uh, spent 35 years with the Rush County Sheriff's Department. Um, he was a big reason why uh, I chose this career. And going along with that, um, so your life has been a lot about, uh, you know a lot about public service. Yes. And what it takes to uh, serve the public with the utmost honor, integrity, mm -hmm. and dedication. Yes. So uh, we, we thank you for your service thus far. And obviously, we thank your your grandfather and your and your father for their years of service as well, because uh, you know it, it, public service takes a lot out of people. It mm -hmm. really does. I mean, it can yeah. be very tiresome on an indiv individual and their family. And so, we would like to take the time to say thank you uh, for everything that you've done thus far and and uh, what you're going to do in the future. Well, yeah, and and thank you to to your wife and kids and, and everything <laughs> like that, because and that's you've sacrificed all your home time for yes for those long hours and yeah. it's awesome. This is your opportunity to say, why Todd Glick? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, back, I graduated um, from my college um, in May of 2017. Um, at, up until that time, finishing my degree was a life goal of mine. Um, and then when I accomplished it, I was kind of like, now what? You know, it was something that had kind of stuck in my crawl for for 20 some years, um, something that I was focused on for 20 some years, and then I had finally achieved it. And now it was kind of like, now what? Um, about two weeks after I graduated, um, I was approached by some individuals and was asked if I would be interested in maybe running for sheriff of Rush County. So. I did a lot of thinking, a lot of soul searching, a lot of um, research, talking with family, friends, and um, decided that, uh, yeah, this was definitely the next step that I needed to do, mainly because of the new jail project that was, um, you know, in its planning stages at that time and has now come to fruition and they're breaking ground. But as you highlighted, uh, the step-by-step -step process of, of the positions you've had in your background, mm -hmm. uh, from reserve to jail uh, to patrolman to detective to administrator, mm -hmm. uh, you really do have an overall grasp of what it goes from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. um, like even, to even, so. <laughs> e even, even really, I mean, even as communications goes, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a person who worked here, uh, again, as I did, uh, you had a, a strong grasp of what it took to run a 911 center, mm -hmm. um, and you and you were always professional, always courteous, and uh, one of the main things I hear about you on the street is that you are a professional and courteous police officer 
who has always done his best to go above and beyond to help those in need. Yeah, and, and I think that. That, that that's a testament yeah, um, that. to why you're here right now, mm -hmm. why we're talking about you running for sheriff. I think that's a testament to that, to all those things being said and, and your dedication and career as a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, but you touched on the jail. Yes. Just a little bit as we yep. were talking through there. And, and we all know that that, uh, that is a, a topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps you could give us a little insight on what your feelings are as they begin this process of building a new jail. Obviously, there's no reason to talk about really if you're in favor or not because, like you said earlier, they have broken ground and mm -hmm. it is going to happen. Right. Um, so kind of tell us a little bit about your feelings on that. Have you had an opportunity to see the plans of the jail? Or? Uh, yes, I have. Um, uh, several months ago, uh, Chief Deputy Slager got with me and uh, showed me the blueprints um, of how everything was going to be laid out. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent that um, the Rush County Sheriff's Department was in need of a new Sheriff's Department and jail facility. Um, it uh, was grossly outdated. Um, some of the maintenance issues within the jail were to the point where, um, you know, it was like trying to do major surgery and the only thing you had to work with was band-aids. Um, with that being said, I do believe that the current jail that is being built um, greatly exceeds the needs of Rush County. And I strongly believe that if it's not ran properly, it will bankrupt this county. Absolutely, it will. And then you kind of said one thing there, you know, it, not only are you a big proponent of it, but the, the state of Indiana was too. Yes. I mean, it, that's, that's something that we had to do mm -hmm. or, you know, there wasn't going to be a jail. Yes. A, lot of, a lot of people don't understand that, and which is fine. Yes. I mean, you don't have no, not everybody has to do their research on that mm -hmm. or, or do anything, you know, but it was handed to, to the county that you know, you've got to do this or you got two options, really. I mean, mm -hmm. do it or don't, and if you don't, then here, beat it. Right. Pretty much. Well, and you know, you, you do, you touched on another piece of that, you know, the maintenance mm -hmm. of, a, of a, you know, the jail was built, I believe, in 1978. Yes, yeah, I believe is when, yeah. in the, when the jail was built. Um, and, you know, while I'm not going to admit that 40 years old is old, because I also was born in 1978, <laughs> uh, but um, you do have the maintenance problems and issues and, mm -hmm. and, and all those things add up. So mm -hmm. as a taxpayer, while you are extremely baffled by the initial price, and you might have a little shell shock, mm -hmm. um, if you actually totaled all those maintenance costs up over the 40 years, you probably would equally, would you say, Todd, be just as shocked by the amount of money spent? Yes, yeah, and an example that I can give you is, um, I was several months back, it may have even been fall, maybe, I had gone down to meet with Sheriff Cowan on something, and um, he actually had trash bags over his computer because his roof was, his ceiling was leaking so bad that he actually had to have trash bags over his computer. So, you know, if you were trying to have a meeting with another law enforcement official, it, it just, it wasn't feasible, you know, and just not very professional looking so mm -hmm. th and that just is a small um tidbit of the wow. problems that they were kind of having yeah that brings a whole new meaning to the term cyber security that's right <laughs> exactly, right. Right. Over the computer. exactly yeah. right yes wow. so but uh awesome awesome one yeah. of the we, we made a post and if you don't follow us on facebook follow us at talk of the town rushville indiana um, we're trying to, to get more you know transparent with uh, with everybody and that's why we're doing these these little interviews and whatnot just to you know they can tell their side of the story and we can get out there and try to get you the best information we can with what we have at that time um, so we put on Facebook this week that we were going to be you know, if you were to ask a sheriff candidate uh, any question what would you ask him and we got a few answers mm -hmm. um, one of the ones that I'll start off with here uh, you know with added jail capacity we will most likely be hosting prisoners from other counties and the state 
How will the new sheriff handle releases of these prisoners so we are not gaining these out-of-towners as new residents? Yeah. That's a good question and a legitimate concern. Um, and I will kind of preface this by saying that I am not a, a big fan of trying to use um, corrections as a source of revenue for the county, but I do understand um, the correctional needs. Um, so yes, we will be housing um, other inmates from other counties. I don't see that being too much of a problem um, just from my past experience, especially working with in Marion County, um, just because I spent so many years there and dealt with it on more of a daily basis and in a larger volume, um, most of the inmates that were brought in from other counties, when it came time for their out date or their release date, um, they were transferred back to their originating county to fi finish up discharge paperwork and, and things of that nature. So they weren't technically released straight from our jail facility. And as the sheriff, I would make sure that that would occur with, with ours so that we weren't just releasing people straight out onto the streets of Rushville with no means of transportation. Now, I also will say that, you know, the majority of people that I've dealt with in the jails, you know, really aren't bad people. Um, most of them have just made mistakes that just tended to be against the law. Um, Happens. So, yeah, so it's not like we're releasing Jeffrey Dahmers and Charles Manson well, you know, on the street. But Todd, I, yeah. yeah, Todd, as many people say, nonviolent offenders. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're nonviolent offenders. You hear it all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think we understand the difference mm -hmm. between those things. And, and your example was prime. Mm -hmm. We're not releasing Jeffrey Dahmer into the to, to the public of, of the city of Rushville mm -hmm. or the county of Rush, um, and I think that's important to know. Yeah, you know but, move yeah. I guess just to make sure that we're clear, I would make sure that those inmates were transferred back to their originating county prior to release, so that they were discharged in the in the county where they offended. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, another one question that we had come up was, you know. Have you considered conducting a time analysis of the best use of staff in the jail to justify their positions? This would include, you know, spreading out responsibilities among shifts and people, just to kind of help, help you know, spread out, mm -hmm. spread out the the goodness, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. In my previous jail experiences, um, that is something that that we did. Um, day shift. Um, it's. It's a little bit different than the law enforcement field. Within the corrections, day shift has a lot more responsibility just because you've got more inmate movement, um, you've got court appearances, you've got lawyers coming in to meet with their clients, you've got um, inmates wanting to go to rec and stuff like that. So, um, and you have more administrative functions that occur during the day. So. Um, I would assume that here in Rush County, it's not much different than any other jail. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that you would have to do as an administrator, just to make sure that you're getting more bang for your buck and that you're not, um, creating some type of officer safety issue within your jail. So. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, Todd, I, I, obviously we all read a lot. Mm -hmm. about what's going on in the world. And one of the big things I see a lot as well when it comes to jails is, uh, you know, we have a huge op opioid problem mm -hmm. uh, ravishing the state of Indiana. Um, with that being said, do you believe that incarceration is the best step every time or should we be trying to educate, re rehabilitate, and do those type of things, you know, educate in our younger, in, in our schools, educate them more, let's say, uh, from the junior high level on, giving them more of an understanding of what happens when you utilize those type of dangerous drugs. Um, and as far as the offenders go, um, you know, I, I myself have, have beat my head up against the wall many a times, uh, thinking to myself, what, what is the answer? 
what what is what, what can we do to help these folks out more instead of just continually sticking them in jail and incarcerating them? Mm -hmm. Because as you and I know, and Dom, um, institutionalizing someone is not the answer. Right. All the time. Yeah. 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 I mean. Well, the the problem is that part of corrections is holding people accountable for their actions. There are consequences for every action that occurs. However, when you're dealing with narcotics offenses, you're dealing with a whole slew of other problems because most individuals that abuse narcotics and alcohol are doing so for a reason. They're trying to fill some type of void or some type of, or trying to hide some type of trauma that has occurred to them. So you have to kind of have a mixture of things. You have to have the, um, the correction standpoint where we are holding you accountable for the wrong action that occurred. However, you also have to empower those individuals to make them want to have a better life. A lot of these individuals want the help. They just can't get the help or they don't know how to get the help. So that's where your prevention and education programs are very important. We really haven't asked you about your, your vision for the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. You know, I think that's important for, for the voters uh, to know and for just the general community to know who, uh, you know, you obviously uh, have the experience, the background. Uh, you've shown that you have dedication and drive to improve yourself, as you said earlier with the uh, college degree, why you held down a full-time job and had a family. Mm -hmm. So we obviously know the experience, the dedication is there. Um, the big part of both of this is, uh, as anyone would tell you when you look into the future, is what kind of vision do you have for the Sheriff's Department? Yeah. Well, I think... Um First off, the citizens of Rush County deserve to have uh, professional and uh, courteous law enforcement service at, at all times. Um, and I think that starts with um, making sure that the officers have uh, the proper training, uh, the proper equipment. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to receive some of the the best training possible that was monetarily beneficial to our department at the time. Um, and with me being a certified law enforcement academy instructor, I've tried to pass on some of that knowledge to, to my other officers. I think it's very important to set goals in your life, um, both you know personally and professionally. Um, and I've been very fortunate enough to be able to accomplish most of the goals that I've, I've set out for myself. Um, a lot of the people at the Sheriff's Department are, are great people, and I think they want to continue to be great. And um, I think with, with the training and the experience that I've had throughout my years in law enforcement experience, I think I am in a position where I can help those people continue to be better so that the citizens of Rush County are, are benefiting. Um, you know, that on a, um, a professional development standpoint. Um, but then I've also got the skills from the administrative side that, um, you know, I've, as assistant chief, you know, I've six years of, you know, dealing with the administrative and the human resources um, aspect and most importantly, the budgets. Um, I, it's no secret that for several years now, the Rushville Police Department has had a manpower issue. Um, at times it's been very stressful, but we've worked through it and we've not sacrificed any of the services to the, uh, the citizens. Um, one of the big things that that has taught me is how to do more with less. Um, you know, for several years, um, you know, I was pulling sometimes double duty and even triple duty where, you know, I was con being the assistant chief and patrol or I was being assistant chief and detective or I was being 
assistant chief detective and patrol, you know, all at once. And uh, the main reason why I did that is because I didn't want to create more work for the uh, for the patrol guys and also tried to save the city money in overtime hours. Um, you know, I approach a lot of things with a, a common sense attitude. Um, and I think that is is what the sheriff's department needs. And I think, um, you know, my my experience um, makes me one of the uh, the best candidates for the job. Well, uh, go yeah. ahead. No. Oh, no, no, no. By all no, means. No, 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 no. After you, <laughs> I insist. By all means, go ahead. I was going to say thank you. Uh, yeah. See? Thank you. Um, <laughs> Well, I do. I try to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, you know, the part. Oh, um, <laughs> that's going to be on the cutting room floor. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we have talked about a lot, and we have, I think personally, we've learned a great deal about Todd Click, not only the sheriff candidate, but Todd Click as man. I agree. And I think it's it's easily an easily drawn conclusion that Todd Click is both a professional law enforcement officer and a man is something that both the city of Rushville and Rush County can be very proud of in saying that we have him as an officer, rather it's here or rather in the future it is indeed as a sheriff of Rush County. Yep. Um, I think our community would be served, well served either way. Worst and case scenario, Todd, not to be negative, but worst case scenario, you're going to be sticking around Rushville and Rush County if this doesn't work out, correct? Right, and it's like I've told people all along, you know, if I don't win, I will be disappointed, but when I wake up the next morning, I'm still a police officer here in Rushville, and I'm still doing what I love and what I've always wanted to do. So, yeah, it'll be a, a disappointment, but, you know, I'm still uh, still living out my dream, so. Absolutely. Well, so, again, we have heard about, we have heard from Todd Click, visions of the Sheriff's Department, visions for the future. We talked on uh, about the jail. We've touched on that a bit. Uh, we touched on his training experience, his life in general. Um, we appreciate your time, Todd, first of all. Um, secondly, we appreciate your time, the community, mm -hmm. those who are paying attention and watching. <laughs> uh, we do appreciate it, and uh, we appreciate the time. Todd, good okay. luck. Thank we you so appreciate much. it. Appreciate you. Okay. Um, thank you. I think that's all we got. That's it. All right. Thank you. Good Until to see you. Until next time, thank you. Don't forget, Pick go out May. and vote May 8th. May 8th. Don't forget the date. May 8th. Go out. Rock the vote. That's exactly right. And as a little free plug here, we got a blood drive coming up April 20th at Fraley and Schilling. It's free. You get nothing but a needle in the arm. Can't beat that. Um, you get to save a life the week of, well, April is... Donating Blood Month, I believe. The week that that is going to be in is Save a Life Week uh, nationally. Um, it's a good opportunity to go out there and, and do some good. Doesn't happen every day. And if uh, you need a Todd Click sign or a shirt, mm -hmm. or if you would like to talk to him, I'm sure uh, you can. He can be reached. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Todd, Todd Click for Rush County Sheriff is that the Facebook page? Yes, uh, I have a Facebook page, Todd Click, for uh, Rush County Sheriff. Um, I also have a link on that page to my website. Um, I don't know what my Euro, Euro, URL is right off the bat. but um, Or um, you can uh, contact any member of my team. Uh, Mike Edwards is my campaign manager. Uh, Mary Ann Beard is my campaign treasurer. Or... Uh, my dad, Mark Click, is the one out uh, slinging all my signs for me. So um, that's good for him to do. Yes, you know. keeps him busy and keeps him out of my mom's hair. Yeah. The uh, the website is tclick119.wixsite. That's wixsite.com slash Todd Click for Sheriff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.